Hi guys and welcome back to another explain video. Today I'll be explaining the pros, cons and differences between floating and solid brake discs. Now I'm currently refurbishing a Mitsubishi Evo 10 on the channel and that's got a pair of floating discs on the front and also a pair of solid discs on the back so I thought it'd be a perfect time to explain the, uh, the differences and the pros and cons. Now what does a brake disc actually do? Well this job is pretty simple. It's uh, a rotating surface that's directly bolted to the wheels of a car and when the brake caliper and pads squeeze onto this rotating surface that creates resistance which slows the rotation of the disc, slows then the rotation of the wheel and therefore the car slows down. So why is there two different types of brake disc? Well all brake discs they perform the same function but they can be used in a wildly different set of applications. For example, someone who is selecting brake discs for their race car, they're going to want different things out of that brake disc to say someone who is looking to uh, put a set of discs on their NAND shopping car. Now generally floating discs, they're not all that common on regular cars. Floating discs can withstand a higher temperature than the equivalent solid discs. And for this reason, we tend to see floating discs used in racing and solid discs tend to be used in road cars. Now that's not to say that solid discs aren't used in racing or they aren't good at racing. It's just that floating discs by design, they can withstand more heat and more track abuse. Now Spark Plug Steve has allowed me to use some of his footage and that's going to come in very useful today. And I've put a link to his channel in the description. So when we look at this video where Spark Plug Steve is bedding in his new racing pads, we can see just how hot the brake discs get on his car. And this is because energy it can't be destroyed, only converted. So the movement or the kinetic energy of that car is being converted into thermal energy, which is stored in the brake disc. But there is a limit to how much heat a solid brake disc can store without becoming damaged. And this is where we're going to see the real benefits of floating discs. As you know from school, when materials get hotter, they expand. And when they get colder, they contract or shrink. And this is called expansion and contraction. So let's look at this video again of the brake disc on Steve's car getting hot. And we can see from that glowing red that the outer edge is clearly hotter than the inside edge of the disc, the part that is bolted to the hub. Now the red hot part of this disc has obviously expanded more than the part in the center, which is not red hot. In my opinion, this is because the alloy and the hub, they're cold and they're sucking thermal heat out of the center of the disc. But you'll have to form your own opinion on why the center isn't as hot. And looking at this animation, we can see that across the diameter of the disc, it has not expanded equally. And this can potentially cause warping and it can potentially cause hairline cracks to form on the disc. But how would a floating disc reduce the risk of warping so that it can withstand these high temperatures? Well, the outer rotor is not cast directly to the hub part of the disc. The rotor is a separate piece of metal to the bell. And the rotor is secured to the bell with bolts. Now these bolts aren't a perfect fit. They have a little bit of play in them, but it's so little that if you went up to the disc, you wouldn't even feel it. And this amount of play, it allows the rotor to expand and contract separately to the bell, which is obviously going to remain much cooler. The end result is more even heating across the diameter of the rotor and a reduced risk of warpage and hairline cracks. So you might be thinking, amazing. Well, why don't all cars have floating discs if they're so good? Well, there's pros and cons to both designs. The additional engineering and manufacturing costs they drastically affect the price to the customer. For example, to get some factory floating discs for my Evo 10, they are around £380 each. Whereas for an aftermarket solid replacement, which has been designed for people who can't perhaps afford the floating ones, they're only £80 each. So that's a direct comparison, 380 each versus 80 each, a massive saving. So going back to the illustration of a grandmother driving to the shops. Well, that car's brakes are probably never going to get 
anywhere near as hot as Steve got his brakes. And they're most likely never going to get anywhere near a hot enough to cause warping or damage. So for that type of vehicle user, floating discs, they're nothing more than an additional expense. And one more downside to floating discs, that due to this slight play in the disc, the bell fixings, they are more likely to squeal and squeak. But uh, in my personal experience, the brakes have never squeaked or squealed since I bought that Evo 10. So hopefully this little video has explained in a clear and simple way why both types of disc exist, how they're both good in different scenarios. Um, and I don't claim to be an engineering expert. I'm just a car enthusiast like you guys. So uh, if you have any opinions on this subject, be sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, I do find it interesting to see what you guys think. And if you did like the video, please remember to click the like button and also to subscribe for more like this. Cheers.